What's up guys and welcome back for another EVE Online video. Tonight is my first video back in well over a month now. Um, thank you for being patient with me, my subscribers. Um, I was playing and recording on a not bad gaming laptop, but it got an old and was no longer able to record and play at the same time. So I have upgraded my kit, I've made it to the land of the PC and uh, it arrived uh, a couple few days ago. I've been getting set up, and this is my first video back. I'm very excited to be able to bring you guys some more content and be able to record again. Um, so, without further ado, uh, I want to jump straight in. Um, obviously, as this is my first video back with a new kit and new setup and stuff, uh, please bear with me. There may be some teething issues with sound, etc. Um, but anyway, so as you can probably tell, from the title of the video and um, also the ship sat in front of me, the Epithal, we're going to be doing some uh, PI, some planetary production this evening. Um, I basically just want to walk you through my full setup I've got in the wormhole where I'm doing um, T4 production of the wetware mainframe. Um, so one of the things I want to point out to start with is how challenging specifically the wetware mainframe is to produce. So if I um, just quickly bring up the information on it, scroll down to where I've got some stored, show info, right. So you can see in the info tab on planetary production, you got wetware mainframe. Um, you can see what is required to produce one, right? And you can see four wetware mainframes. I'm going to have to stop saying that because it'll get annoying for you all. You need three tier three input um, uh, inputs, basically, commodities, right? That's now, if you know much about tier four production, you know that's not that unusual to have to need three. Uh, all of them require three inputs. Some require three tier three inputs. So um, let's just have a just drop down so that we can find a different tier four, right? So industrial explosives go into nanofactories, right? So nanofactories, the tier four, require three inputs, but only two of them are tier threes, and one is tier one. So nanofactory is quite easy to produce. Uh, let's drop down and find a different one. Reactive metals, uh, mechanical parts, planetary vehicles, integrity response drones. Alright, so this one, integrity response drones, tier 4, requires three tier 3s. Right, okay. Um, and so actually, integrity response drones is another example similar to a tier f the. Um, wetware mainframes okay so this is equally difficult to produce you'll see each of the tier 3 items it comes up on the left just where it drops off when I come off you can see the inputs required for those tier 3's each tier 3 requires three tier 2 inputs you see that and now that's actually not very uh, that's fairly unique to both wetware mainframes and integrity response drones I think so if I drop lower let's go polytextiles hazmat detection. No, that was the one I was already in. Apologies. Industrial explosives. As a tier 3 only requires two tier 2s. So that demonstrates how easy the manufacturer is again, right? Two tier 2s, a tier 1, two tier 2s. That's it. Whereas for wetware mainframes, which we go all the way back for, all the way, you require nine tier 2 inputs, right? Three there, three there, three there. So that's a serious amount of planetary production you need just to produce one tier four. And as we just learned, it's the same for the integrity response drones. Um, so to be able to achieve this, to do um, decent production of wetware mainframes, um, <clears throat> if you saw my last video before I went offline, um, I now live in a wormhole. So this is all a bit easier in a wormhole. But even in wormhole space, I'm using two characters on this account uh, and actually just in case you don't realize if you're not aware if I log off and go back to the loading screen one paid account 
so you can only do PI on an Omega account. If you Omega one account, you can have three characters on that one account that can all you just are all Omega, yeah. But the only caveat is that you can't log them in simultaneously, and you can only train skills on one of them at a time, providing um, connecting, providing you don't pay for an additional skill key. Um, so what I was, so that's just in case you weren't aware. Um, so I have across two of my characters so far, and I'm actually training the third up. Um, I have my PI set up. So Wad Enderas is my main guy, and I've got Frank Jr. the second. Um, he's also running PI. He's exclusively a PI alt. He lives in the wormhole. Does nothing else except once every couple of days goes around and does some PI stuff. And so I'm not going to go through all of his stuff today as well because the video will be very long. I think it's going to be quite long anyway because. I want to go into some detail, I'm happy to be back, and I just want to walk you through the process I do to um, to produce it. Right, so what we'll start with is the planets that um, Wad has open. Um, oh, and I will mention um, two of my planets are essentially out of action, one on Wad, one on Frank. They're producing rocket fuel for something that the corporation is doing, so they're not part of the wetware mainframe um, production. Um, but we will just have a quick look at it in a second but you can see I've got four planets that are doing just tier one production just full extraction and production four of them my rocket fuel separate and then one production planet um, and I, I've got Frank has six planets uh, well one's a rocket fuel five that are just doing tier one and that's all feeding into this production planet on what okay We'll cover the production planet a bit later on, but to start with, we'll just jump into rocket fuel. You can see everything's come to an end because I've been offline for a couple of days. Um, but basically, this is separate from my wetware mainframe, my tier four. Um, but I do have a planet, as you can see, set up doing rocket fuel, which is tier two. So one planet going from extraction to tier two, and one of the joys of being in the wormhole. Uh, I'll just show you in the agency resource harvesting. Oh, if you don't know, by the way, you can find all the planet information in your agency resource harvesting planetary production. Is the abundance of resources right? So if we look down at this this planet, planet nine, we've got 104% aqueous liquids, 105%, 103%. Sorry, heavy metals. Like all of these bars are huge, all the way up. So that's the joy of being in a wormhole. It's the same in Nullsec. Basement, look at that, huge. So um, if you compare that with a high sec system where the numbers are, like you'll be lucky to get the highest figure at 37% in a high sec planet. Just bear that in mind. Um, I can't recommend setting up, joining a corporation that's got some null sec uh, sovereignty or it, some wormhole space and being able to do your PI in there. But anyway, back to this planet, I just um, will go through my whole workflow, basically. Um, I reset all of my extractors very quickly, like I'm not too worried about it. Um, I have everything currently set to 1 day 45, because that's the maximum it can go in 15 minute increments. If I go one higher, you can see all those bars got a lot thicker, that's all now half an hour increments. So one day 45 is the highest for 15 minute increments. I just hit start on that. Do the same on the other one. Start um, and submit. Um, and just so you can see, I've got an extractor, extracting suspended plasma. That's then going to the storage facility and then going straight into my basic industry facilities, produce pl plasmoids which are then going back into the storage facility. Uh, same is happening up here, but with electrolytes. And then from these two storage facilities, it's being dragged into uh, these three advanced industry facilities to produce rocket fuel, which are then shipped into the launch pad. I've already got some rocket fuel. Um, just so you're aware, guys, the idea with, with PI 
um, is it's very, very lucrative passive income, right? So if you've got it all set up correctly, like I'm not quite there yet, but I'm close. Um, if you have all three characters set up correctly, you can plex your account just from PI. That's the idea, right? So you're pulling in about one and a half billion per month just from PI. And it's relatively passive, but you can choose to be more active. I'm being quite active with it at the moment while I'm still trying to uh, make sure I'm properly set up. Um, but once once you've got it all going, you can make it more passive. You know, you can change the um, cycle times to be two days, three days, whatever, and it will just run nicely in the background. And you can pull in yeah, a billion and a half a month with three characters. I'd say I'm pulling in about a billion at the moment with the two. So that's just something to think about and a way to plex your account potentially. All right, so then just back back to the wetware mainframe. I just flip to each planet and I set it running. Start extraction. Submit. Um, and what I also tend to do, uh, I'm going to do... No, I'm not going to do it today because um, you can see that the storage isn't very full. But what I normally do, this is every maybe every three days, um, because the abundance is so high. Sorry, I just knocked the microphone. Um, because the abundance of materials is so high, um, you can see I've got eight. This is a T1 planet. I've got one extractor unit, eight facility one facilities, all producing the same thing. That's a little bit overkill. I'd say I need about six, so I might rework this at some stage. Um, and in about three days, this gets to close to 10,000 meters cubed, at which stage I move it over to the launch pad and throw it into the customs office, and we'll go and collect it. So I'm not going to do that today, um, because I don't want to waste your time, but, you know. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, carry on. That's the back my temperate planet then we're going to do oxygen at the gas planet again just look at the figures look because of my so on the gas planet everything's in bands and so you, I don't know if you'll believe me or not but I was originally set up around a big hotspot like this but because of my syst my um, PI setup it's extracted it away right that band is thinned which is a bit annoying but you can still look at the figures they're all well over 200. Right, I'm going to I'm pulling in 50,000 M3 an hour for 24 hours. Compare that to a high sec setup, and you're laughing. And next, but again, just going to move on. Next planet, and this is what I do. Um, currently, I do it once a day, uh, but I will be reducing it moving forwards when I'm ha fully set up and happy um, but the whole thing I'd say across both accounts sorry both characters across Ward and Frank takes me about 20 minutes a day so not that, too, not that bad like it's taking me a minute at the moment because I'm talking to you guys and getting tripping over myself and things but you know not too bad um, and so then the other thing is then my production planet. So this is where I pull in all the materials from Wad, from Frank, and take it to convert them all from the tier one into tier four on the one planet. And the way I do it is I have a um, a rock a launch pad for each tier three uh, commodity. So wetware mainframe requires three tier threes so I've got three launch pads and around each launch pad I've got everything you'd need to produce that tier three from the tier one so here I've got a tier two factory construction blocks two of them and then I have two livestock factories and two nanite factories and then one tier three factory which uses all the three tier twos that are around this um, launch pad. So in essence, what it, what you do, and I'll, I'll do this in a second, but I need to talk through it instead of doing it in space because um, it puts my ship at risk, um, is I 
would over the launch pad, which I can't do at the moment, and I would drop in the commodities to each launch pad that are required to run. And then it produces so it produces all the T2 and it produces twice the amount of T2 because you need double the amount to produce one tier three. And then the three tier threes are produced and are pulled together in my tier four factory. Um, it's worth mentioning that to do tier four production, it's a high tech production plant, and this is only you can only place this on two planet types. It's the only um, uh, facility that's limited by fact, um, planet type, but you, you can only go on barren, and I can't actually remember what the other one is. I think it's temperate, um, but it definitely can go on a barren. So I made the mistake of getting all this set up on a gas spent 18 million or something on it and then realized uh, and that it, I couldn't place this facility and had to move it. So that's a bit annoying. Um, and you'll see it produces wet wear mainframes. Um, this is two days. So the, the other interesting thing, okay, is because of the sheer amount of T1 materials required to do this, I can only fit two days worth of production onto the planet at any given moment because I need about 9,000 M3 of tier 1 in each launch pad to do two days worth of production and that's producing one wet mainframe every two hours because I'm limited to just one uh, tier 3 factory so I can only produce 12 a day at this rate which gives me a glut of T1 because of the production. So uh, I'm going to be setting up um, other planets on my third character to try and speed this up and increase my income. But yeah. Um, so what I then do, and I'm, I'm not going to do this now because it's time consuming for you guys, um, but basically I have all of my... Uh, just stop scrolling and just go down here. All of my tier one materials, which go from here to here, here, ten of them. You can see that I've got 484 just in T1 knocking about. And I will take the amount I need in my epithal out to the production planet. So the way we do that is I should create a notebook, um, but I haven't yet. Uh, but basically, you can see, all right, uh, it's pretty uh, pretty annoying doing this but it's not it's not too bad right so the way I do it is I've got where we're mainframe I need supercomputers okay to produce supercomputers I need water cooled CPU coolant consumer electronics to do each of them I can see the T1 materials to the left I know I need 3840 units of tier 1 per tier 2 <laughs> to do 48 hours of production so here I would go, I need reactive metals and water, so in 3840 and water in 3840 and then coolant, I need electrolytes and water, so electrolytes 3840 and water 3840 and consumer electronics, I need toxic metals and chiral structures, toxic metals 3840 and chiral structures 3840 and then I'd go back into wet wear mainframe and do the same for biotech research reports and then for cry cryoprotectant solution and I'd end up with everything in my um, hold um, it's worth mentioning at this point guys by the way I've got uh, this is worth thinking about because it's so complex you need a lot of different tier ones in this system I could produce everything except chiral structures which is a little bit annoying when I realised but it's not the end of the world because I can take my epithal over to a hub, Amar or Jita, wherever my wormhole spawns closest to at that moment and I fill my cargo hold with chiral structures and bring it back in it's about, cost me about 150 million ish um, but that lasts me two months is the idea so every two months I need to go and spend 150 million, but if I'm pulling in a billion each time, 
you know, that's a pretty pretty good payoff. Um, the other thing I actually had a question about, and I would appreciate if anyone could let me know in the comments, is if there's a way to stop. So basically here, if I just add quickly another one, if I just do um, the cryoprotectant solutions just to prove my point. If I quickly grab bacteria and water, bacteria, 840, what just happened? Took it to the wrong place. Stack that again. Alright. Bacteria into there this time. 3840. And it was water, wasn't it? Water. 3840. Electrolytes and oxygen. And bacteria and proteins. So basically my question is because I want to minimize the amount of time I spend just floating in space because this is wormhole space anyone can kill me at any moment I would organize in my item hanger here the um, the elements into the um, oh why can't I speak the materials into the right uh, units so that they can go straight into the relevant launch pad because you can't just throw it all into the... Oh, I guess I could, and then I separate it out whilst I'm anchored. Alright, let's try that. I'm going to I'm gonna go through the whole thing. We're nearly there anyway, so... Uh, if you want to turn off at this point, obviously feel free. Um, but basically, we're just going to quickly run through biotech research reports, bacteria reactive metals, metals, livestock, proteins and biofuels, and reactive and toxic. So obviously the more I do this, um, the better my memory of it will become. Um, and also actually what I did take to doing before, which I haven't done in this video, is doubling those units because I can fit double into the um, um, customs office which is important, it means I have to undock or make myself safe, uh, unsafe um, one less time right. drive. <coughs> excuse me um, so yeah I haven't done that on this occasion because I wasn't actually planning on heading out to the planet but um, Ordinarily, I would do <coughs> four days worth, so double those units. Alright, so as we're approaching the planet, I'm scanning all the time on D scan. D scan, D scan, D scan. Which I've got hidden. D scan. Alright, we're arriving. And what I can do this time, and what we're testing anyway, is. Access. Um, I want to transfer that up, drop it into there, and then everything else which can take drop into there. And we're going to head back to where we came from, but we're not going to do dock. Active. We're not going to dock. And this time on the way there, we can get this back up and do it all again, but in reverse. So I know I've got launch pad 7VRYI. I need to find that launch pad. It's the bottom one. And then I check the. And it's biotech research reports. So I know to go into there, I need all of these things. So, back the other way. 3840 of bacteria and reactive metals. 3840 livestock. Proteins and biofuels, 3840, um, biofuels, and toxic and reactive metals. So the thing here is you have to stay undocked, but I am tethered. You have to stay undocked to be able to 
do the transfers, but I'm tethered to the station. Um, so transfer that. We should see that all start. There you go, they've, they've all started, so that's worked, so that's filled up. And we're on to the next one, which is OV, 0V, and that is cryoprotectant solution. So we do the same, real as quickly as we can, cryoprotectant solution, bacteria and water, 40 40 synthetic oil electrolytes and oxygen electrolytes and oxygen and bacteria and proteins bacteria proteins transfer that started and last one everything else that's odd there we go transfer so that's now going and will run for two days and should produce me 24 wetware mainframes. All right. Oh, and then I want to dock. Obviously, Just if I was being sensible, I would have docked and dropped off the wetware mainframes before just sitting in space with that in my hold. So don't make that mistake yourselves. Um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially that's what I do for my PI at the moment, I, as I say, it brings me in about a billion a month. Um, it's a lot quicker than that because I was going through it slowly and trying to show you guys what I was doing. But I do do the same on a second character and eventually the th a third, hopefully that, that he's in training at the moment, um, and so that will be, you know, maybe half an hour if I want to do that. And at the moment, I'm doing it once every two days. Well, I reset the planets, but the re uh, resetting the planets takes five minutes. And you can do that from anywhere in the universe, uh, as far as I know. Um, you don't have to be in system. You don't even have to be in region. So I can be off somewhere else, 30 jumps away, not in wormhole space, and I can just reset my planets in five minutes and carry on with what I'm doing. Um, and you can do this all on one Omega account with three characters. And there's no, not really any reason not to. If you can afford the time to train your other characters, then do it. I can't stress that enough. Um, but yeah. Uh, and also, I just want to mention that uh, the corporation I'm in, in Wormhole Space, is a disaster area. Uh, we are recruiting. Um, and so if you want to fancy joining us, working in a wormhole, um, let me know, hit, hit me up in game and we'll, uh, we'll be happy to have you on board and if you enjoyed the video, I'm sorry it's run long I got a bit carried away, a bit excited about being back um, so if you enjoyed the video, uh, found it informative please like it, um, it means a lot, it means a huge amount to me um, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the format, enjoyed the video, I'll be doing a lot more in wormhole space doing some fleet action we've got quite a bit of pvp that's going on um i will be bringing you a video on one of my other passive incomes that i've been investigating um i'll still be investigating it when i produce the video i guess uh but yeah so as anyway guys thank you very much for watching i really appreciate you uh, sticking by while i've been absent and yeah, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.